Hi, I'm Matt Ambrose with the Defense Acquisition University, and I'd like to take a few minutes to explain some things about live fire test and evaluation. We're going to talk about what it is, whether it's applicable to your system, uh, what the dimensions are, and where we might expect to do live fire test and evaluation across the life cycle. So first, live fire test and evaluation has two major dimensions, survivability and lethality. But before you go off and start testing, doing live fire test and evaluation, you really need to find out if your system is covered under the law, because this is a statutory or by law requirement. And not all systems necessarily need to do the statutory live fire test and evaluation. So the first question you're going to ask yourself is, is the system covered under the law? And there's two different parts to that. Survivability is any major system, a CAT 1 or 2, that provides some measure of protection for its occupants. So that's the survivability piece. Do you provide protection for soldier, sailor, airman, or marine on the battlefield? If you do, then you're going to have to do survivability testing in terms of live fire test and evaluation. Lethality is a little different. Uh, are you a major missile or munition system or a munition system that we expect to procure a million rounds or more? Then the statute applies to you and you need to do lethality live fire testing to make sure that your mun munition is as lethal as it's supposed to be against whatever the targets of your particular munition are. So that's the lethality dimension of live fire test and evaluation. If neither one of these applies to your system, you don't have to do live fire test and evaluation. So there's no point in really in doing it. Now, will you go out and shoot any weapon on your system and make sure it works and it's accurate? Absolutely. But that is not the statutory live fire test and evaluation that we're talking about here. That would just be normal operational testing. Uh, and developmental testing that you would do on your system to prove out your key performance parameters or other requirements on your system. Um, that's different, again, than the statutory live fire test and evaluation because the statutory LFT&E, that report has to go to Congress. So um, if you don't have to do live fire test and evaluation, then you probably shouldn't put that on your, your schedule. Now, what about a waiver? People talk about, can you get a waiver from live fire test and evaluation? And the answer is sort of. You can get a waiver from full up system live fire test and evaluation and it doesn't matter which dimension we're talking about here, survivability or lethality. If your system is covered under the law, in other words, you have to do live fire test and evaluation because you provide protection or you're a munition system that provides lethality, then you can get a waiver from full up system live fire test and evaluation, but you can't get a waiver from doing live fire test and evaluation. You still have to prove that your system is as survivable or as lethal as it is supposed to be according to the requirements for your system. So you're still going to have to do live fire test and evaluation, but you might not have to do it on the full up system. For instance, you've got an aircraft carrier system. Are we going to go out there and blow up the next aircraft carrier to prove that it has survivability in the areas it's supposed to have survivability? No. We're probably going to do component testing, we're probably going to do piece part testing, that kind of thing, and do some modeling and simulation to prove that. We would want to get, by milestone B, we would want to get that waiver established. That's the time you have to get that established to get a waiver from full up system live fire test and evaluation. So speaking of milestone B and, and the overall life cycle, let's look at where we would do live fire test and evaluation across the life cycle. So we've already kind of laid in earlier uh, our developmental operational testing and our interoperability testing. Live fire test and evaluation, again, early and often. Uh, if you have piece parts of your systems or components that you can do some early live fire test and evaluation on, absolutely during technology maturation and risk reduction, you should do some of that live fire testing so that you set yourself up for success later on in the program. Once you have a build to design here in engineering and manufacturing development, again, you should be doing some live fire test and evaluation so that uh, once you get past milestone C and you have actual no kidding systems that you're going to do live fire on, then you would at that point do a full up system level live fire test and evaluation and these earlier ones would set you up for success in that. Now what if you've gotten a waiver for this 
full up system live fire test and evaluation. Does that mean you don't have to do live fire test and evaluation after milestone C? Not the case at all. You would still be doing live fire test and evaluation. However, it would not be the full up system level live fire test and evaluation. You still have to prove, again, if you are covered under the law that your um, occupants are, are going to survive like they should or that your munition is as lethal as it should be. Okay, so this has been a discussion here now on live fire test and evaluation, when we would do it, uh, when it's appropriate, how it applies to different acquisition systems. I hope this has been helpful to you and I've cleared a few things up. Thanks for tuning in.